Hey, so I've been editing all my videos on this mobile studio as I call it for a few months now. And if you've ever tried editing video on a regular for like YouTube or something, then you'll know how much of a pain it can be sometimes to get through the edit to the final cut. But it's a little different here with this iPad Pro running LumaFusion, an app that promises to provide an editing experience on par with desktop apps. And in my experience so far, it's better than that. Okay, so first things first, importing. Well, here's the library and it integrates with the Photos app, files and even some wireless drives. External drive support was recently added and while it's still not possible to edit off of an external drive, it imports the media only when you drop it onto the timeline. So you don't have to copy everything over before you get started. It's just an effort to save some storage space on your device and trust me, you can never have enough storage for your media. You can also import files directly from cloud storage from here and everything goes into the imported folder inside LumaFusion. You can first preview the clip or just drag it onto the timeline. Now it uses what's called a magnetic timeline. And if you're familiar with iMovie or Final Cut on Mac, then you'll be at home here. It is quite like a light version of Final Cut, optimized for touch. But unlike Final Cut or iMovie, it doesn't need to render the timeline first for playback. As you edit, you see the final output instantly there's absolutely no lag or waiting and this is what I think makes it so powerful. This and the tactility with touch makes editing a whole lot fun and almost a pleasure. Getting ideas from your head onto the screen quickly is where it shines really and the performance never gets in the way. It can handle multiple streams of 4K footage without a stutter. Yeah, but you need to make sure that the codec or the file type is supported on iOS, so no ProRes or RAW. But sometimes I'm moving so fast with the edit that I realize I freaking love the gestures on this thing. Like triple tap on a clip to detach its audio. Tap with two fingers to split the clip at the playhead then flick to delete or mark an in point by swiping down on the preview window and out by swiping up hold down on the play button to scrub frame Zoom in the timeline to the frame level by a triple tap on the timeline or else swipe left and right on the preview to move frame by frame. Oh and if you'd rather be using a keyboard, there are shortcuts for that too. Okay once you've arranged everything together, it's time to look for transitions. There are quite a few of the standard ones built in. Now as there are 6 tracks of video available, you can easily use some third party ones if you really want. It's the same with titles as well. There are a bunch of them and all are static. And honestly, I wouldn't even consider anything other than the basic one. They all look pretty dated to me. Yeah, never using them. But what's great though is that you can use your own fonts and tweak some of the parameters to create presets, essentially building your own titles. Now in the clip editor, you can position and reframe your clips or even use keyframes to sort of animate or simply add some motion. There are also some basic color correction tools built in. 
You can use the presets or do what I do and move some sliders. You can import your LUTs as well. Now the iPad Pro's display is perfectly fine for color grading, but you can also output the preview onto an external display via an Apple dongle or even AirPlay it to a TV. Playing back on a bigger screen also helps spot the things you'd otherwise miss on the smaller display. It's a pretty useful addition. Now once you're done with all the adjustments, you can copy and paste them onto other clips with this clipboard here. But there's a big catch. You cannot select multiple clips in the timeline, so you'll have to paste it to every clip one by one. And this does affect other things in your workflow as well. And yeah, talking of slowing things down, you can adjust the speed of your clips for slow motion shot at higher frame rates. But again, it doesn't support the advanced features like speed ramping. But that's minor. What else you don't get is stabilization. There is no option whatsoever to add stabilization to a clip. And that to me is a glaring omission. Going over the audio now, it's sort of a mixed bag. It has some advanced tools like audio ducking, but there's no built-in noise removal tool, no EQ, and some odd stuff like you can only raise audio levels maximum by 12 dB, while it can go as low as 90 dB. Monitoring tools are there, but again, no exact level markings, only sections of green, yellow, and red. Oh, and with the iPad, you need to use a dongle or Type-C headphones, and that doesn't always work out. You can use Bluetooth headphones, but there's a delay, and we are talking milliseconds here, but still. You can use keyframes to vary the levels. Mixing tools are also present. It's all quite intuitive and powerful. All in all, the audio features aren't necessarily complete and are lacking really compared to something like Final Cut. Now look, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be great if you could start the edit here and then move over to Final Cut to finish? XML export is indeed coming soon in an update. And that's the thing with Luma. Updates are pushed out from time to time. So expect new features to be added. Now once you're all done with the edit, it does give you quite a bit of control over the export. You can control bit rates, frame rates, aspect ratio, and a whole bunch of stuff. But what's truly remarkable is the speed with which it goes. Export times are stupid fast compared to desktop apps. It does it in almost real time. But you need to keep the app open during the whole process. You basically cannot do anything else on your iPad till it finishes up the export. Now again, if you're publishing the video on the web, like YouTube or something, Uploading the file can be a bit of a challenge really. Uploads of 6GB don't work unless you keep Safari open during the whole process. And frankly, I've never been able to get it to work. The YouTube app does get it done for me, but that only works with the Photos app. Now there is an option in LumaFusion to upload directly to YouTube, so I'll see how that works out. So yeah, that's it. That's the whole process of editing video on the iPad. Now it's not as smooth as it looks. I switched over from an iMac and the one thing I miss is the stability. The app has been unstable for me since the beginning really. Exports fail about half the time. The app sometimes crashes altogether, although that's rare. And the playback freezes sometimes while scrolling the timeline. This last project worked out fine. I had no issues apart from one failed attempt at exporting. But this edit was about as simple as it gets. And it was not on the chopping block for a long time either. Now if you factor in the costs, this iPad Pro with LumaFusion costs less than $1000, while a Mac with similar performance bundled with Final Cut Pro 10 will run you north of 2000 Now that's not to say that it's on par with Final Cut. There's like a million things missing here, but still, being aware of what it does and what it doesn't, what it does is remarkable. The thing is, I'm able to move much faster with the edit than on any other application, and that's what really matters at the end of the day.
Hey there, so this video was crafted in LumaFusion. Leave a thumbs up if you think it was good. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you soon. Bye.